They'll be here. If he was in Ireland, yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. <laughs> All right, we have the victorious Cincinnati Bearcats here. Our student athletes, Kyle Washington, Troy Copain, the head coach, Mick Cronin, and Mick. Uh, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Nice to celebrate with a win. And to you too, my good friend, Mr. Kelly. Uh, obviously, uh, at this time of year, a one-point win is enough. Today, we were, uh, we were in control throughout. I thought Troy played his best game of the year. Uh, for a couple years, he's carried us offensively. We got him some help this year, and uh, he sacrificed a lot for his team. Um, but uh, today, he made the coach look good. You know, every time we needed a big play, he put the ball in the basket. Uh, you know, he just does a great job of taking care of the ball, taking care of the ball, play with great pace. Uh, and players win games. And, you know, coach, you, you, you can have a lot of strategy in coaching, but it doesn't work if guys don't put the ball in the basket or make the right pass. And, uh, both these guys put it in the basket today. They're a combined 12 for 16 from the field. You know, against any team coached by Bruce Weber is going to dig in on the defensive end. They're not easy to score on. Uh, so was, obviously uh, we're happy to be playing on Sunday. So a lot of, a lot of uh, great efforts by our team, and we were able to establish our low post position early. I thought that was a key to the game. That was something we practiced all week. So, Questions, Joe? Mick, Joe Davidson, Sacramento Bee. You, you said earlier in the week that you were maybe a little disappointed about having to come all the way west again. Getting a win makes it a little bit easier, I would think, especially on St. Patty's Day when you could have a good, good drink to follow it up. Uh, well, exactly. Uh, first of all, I would say, you know, clarify that. You know what? I love the West Coast. You know, two of my best friends are here uh, from L.A. Uh, I can't get them out of California. It's the only way I can see them is to come here. Uh, it's hard to get them out of Southern California. But uh, you know, the, only, the only problem is the family travel, you know, for, for all of our kids. It's such a, a life, once in a lifetime experience for a lot of kids. Uh, you know, parents nowadays of, of our players, all of our players, they're driving these guys around the AAU tournaments. Like I know both these guys' parents extremely well. A lot, lot of long drives and bad food, fast food, sitting in the gym all day. Uh, weekend after weekend at AAU events. So, you know, they, they're, they, to see their son get on the biggest stage, uh, you, you, want your, you want them to be able to be there. That's aside from our students, who we, the only ones we have here would be our band and our cheerleaders. Uh, so, but Sacramento's been great. My friend Mr. Kelly and I have bonded. Uh, our hosts have been great. You know, obviously, uh, for, for those of us back from the Midwest, it's good to see the sun. Over here. Eddie Mason at Fox Sports Digital. Um, Troy, this question is for you. You guys are ranked the sixth seed, top 25 offense, top 10, uh, top 10 defense, yet you got a sixth. Do you feel like this is a great way to validate what you guys done over the course of the season and more to come? Uh, I was just thankful to have the opportunity to be playing in March. Uh, seeding didn't really matter. I knew we was going to have to be ready to play basketball regardless. Um, having a challenge, you know, six as a six seed to play, you know, Kansas State at the 11 seed, it's just basketball. And we was excited. Uh, we prepared well. Uh, we prepared for any challenger, even if we got a higher seed. Uh, we're thankful, you know, happy to play on Sunday. Michael. Kyle, it seemed like Mick said you guys were in control the whole game. And it just seemed like every time they tried to make any kind of run at you, you guys would get that key basket to stop them. Was there a sense in your team just of it's not going to happen today? We got this all the way, all the way. Yeah, we had a sense of calm. Uh, I was just looking at Gary, and I told Troy before the game, I'm following your lead. And obviously, he did a great job of setting the tone of facilitating and, and putting the ball in the basket when we needed it. 
And, uh, you know, we just had a sense of calm the whole time. And, you know, we have guys that this is my third tournament. This is uh, Troy's fourth, Gary's third, Troy, uh, I mean, Kevin's fourth. So we have and a whole bunch of guys that are experienced and ready to play. So we were, we were ready. Mark. Coach Mark Billingsley, Manhattan Mercury. What did you guys do against Wesley Awundu uh, in the first half? He, he got into some foul trouble, but how did you frustrate him, or did you think that you frustrated him to, to get him out of his game in the first half? He came back in the second. But. Um, you know, our game plan was to try to make him beat us from the perimeter. You know, at, the, at his size with his ball handling ability, we didn't want to let him get to the rim too much put, because then Kyle ends up getting in foul trouble trying to help, uh, which is why he had two in the first half. But uh, – He's he, he, kids play really well. I watch a lot of film on him the last few days. The last three weeks, he's really playing well. When he makes shots, he's he's got pro potential because he's say, a legitimate six seven and he can really handle the ball. So late in the game, uh, if I had it to do over again, I'd have tried to told our guys just try to full out deny him because uh, they, they obviously became really reliant upon his offense late in the game. Stokes didn't have he's two for ten. He's had a great year for them. I think he's been a big difference for their team. And uh, they, they weren't able to get him going at all today. I think that was probably a big key for us. But Wesley's a great player. If Paul. I could follow up on, on Kyle's statement about you guys having a sense of calm before the game, why was that? Was it the preparation? Was it the confidence you had in yourselves? I mean, it was obvious throughout that you felt as if you were going to win tonight. And I'm sure you go into every game feeling like that, but tonight it kind of manifested itself pretty obviously on the court. Why? Why tonight? Uh, I just think that coach kept on reasserting the message of we work too hard to just play here one game and, and, and pack up and go home and get ready for spring break. We don't want to do that. We've, the coaches have dedicated a lot of time. The players have dedicated a lot of time. And this is a cohesive group that, you know, we just want to win. And we just we just want to keep on moving forward and, and, and keep on putting Z I mean uh, Cincinnati out there, you know we beat Xavier. That's what I was thinking of. We beat Xavier and we haven't beat them in a long time. But you know we just want to keep on doing things that we haven't done in the past few years. I, I would say I would say Doc, uh, you know something that's really helped us. You know Kyle went to a Sweet 16 at NC State. Haven't played in the ACC. Um, he is constantly. Uh, pumping up his teammates to believe that we can do something special all year. Um, he's almost like Mundini Brown in Ali's corner. He really is. I mean, Troy will tell you. I mean, he's, he's always, you know, he's telling guys he can't, they can't guard you. He's, you know, he's always in Troy's ear or Gary's ear, who, you know, whomever on our team always pumping them up. So I think his past success uh, and his big game experience it just was an added plus for our team. Uh, that, and I, I think, you know, these guys, I, I really believe this. Uh, we won 30 games, so you ought to be confident. I mean, they've only lost the four teams all year. So, you know, I think uh, they should be confident. You know, I think they understand <clears throat> that I think this team offensively, when if we just don't let people defend us, don't bail them out, because we have enough weapons that if we, uh, we force teams to try to take something away, whatever they give up by taking that away, we have weapons to, to put the ball in the basket. So uh, I think that, that's probably the biggest difference with these guys. But they've been doing that all year, so they kind of know. You know, I think sometimes you get it you, you becomes a little too easy. And uh, the, the, the late season became a little bit of a grind for them. That's just human nature. The, you know, I think Troy, if Troy would tell you, I mean, they, they, they've been waiting to play in March for a while. I mean, they, they've known this day was coming. You know, not that we didn't want to win our league, league championship or anything like that. Uh, but let's be honest, you know, this day and age, it's all about this tournament, especially for these kids. That's all, you know, that's all they hear about. Hey, Troy, uh, could you comment a little bit about big picture what this win means in terms of and coach maybe yourself to coach mentioned that you know you've won 20, 30 games now great year either way but if you maybe hadn't won this game some people might have said oh brother you know another first round loss so what does this win means I said that yesterday. Did, did, did you, did you say, answer did that say, already no uh, no oh, go I, ahead yesterday um 
I feel like, you know, to have this opportunity, you know, we never won on the West Coast. Uh, two in Spokane, we lost first round. And to have the opportunity to come back to the West Coast, you know, and win first round as, as a goal, you know, maybe not for the team, but individually, I know our seniors, we talked about it before we left to conquer the West Coast. And to have an opportunity to do it on the first day is, is special for us. And I feel like if we didn't, you know, have if we didn't have this win, I feel like the if we went back to Cincinnati, they would have said, oh, another good team that lost in the first round, you know, regardless of what we did in the regular season. Um, this is what it really counts. This is where it really counts. This, we didn't put all the things that were talked about into March, and they would have probably stunned it on us like normal. But, hey, we're playing for each other. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can comment on it. I could care less what anybody would have said. So I'm happy that he played well for him. You know, we, we uh, this, I think, you know, it's all the outside stuff. We understand it. But they, if that's why you're playing or that's why you're coaching, you're going to have a hollow ending. And I don't care how many games you win. What makes it real is these guys want to, they love each other and they play for each other. They want to, they want to keep playing because they like playing. They want to be around each other. And they're not, they're not trying to silence critics. I know I'm not. And I try to get that to rub off them. They need to – we've had a successful year. Only one team's going to win this tournament. And I'm talking about the whole tournament. And we're going to do everything we can to try to win this tournament. I don't lack in competitiveness. I probably have too much. But when that I, I'm well aware that there's a lot more important things out there. So, um, you know, what, what, what somebody else thinks about defining whether our season's a success is comical to me. You know, successful because these – I got three seniors are going to graduate and – Kids learn to sacrifice for the, each other and, and uh, all the lessons that, that, that go on in team sports. So we're playing for us. We're happy. You know, we're t obviously I'm a Cincinnati guy and a graduate. My dad and, you know, I practically grew up in Coryville like both my parents. And I, want, I want to win for my school, but, you know, for not worry about what anybody says. It would be the last thing that – on our, I, I want to coach Troy for three more weeks. That's why I want to win. Ken Corbett from the Topeka Capital Journal for Coach. Uh, Wesley and Wendell got two early fouls, and he came back in and got the third one. Did you try to go at him yeah. maybe to get that third one? We got, went at him to get the third, and then we tried to go at him to get the fourth, and he got out of Gary's way, and Gary showed everybody that he doesn't jump that well <laughs> on that dunk. Because Wesley just gave, he gave he, it was he had to give it to him because it would have been his fourth. Um, so no, no doubt, those are big plays for us, very big plays for us. And I give our guys credit. You know, Jacob, uh, I think was the guy to put his third on him, and he did it on purpose. So playing smart's a big part of this. Everybody plays hard this time of year. You wouldn't be in the tournament. You got to play smart as well. So it was really smart play by Jacob Evans. Uh, T.J. Mahoney, Turner Sports. Coach, can you talk about the uh, hot start you guys got off to? I think you guys hit the hit your first eight shots. I like I like our chances with dunks and layups. <laughs> Kyle and Gary inside. You know our game plan was to go inside. Um, you know we we feel like we're bailing people out if we don't establish that because we have two of the best low post scores in this tournament. They're also very good passers, so it it, it makes you kind of pick your poison in defending us. Uh, and we worked hard on it this week. We had a great week of practice, and the guys really were committed to it. And they saw the fruits of trying to work hard to get that ball closer to the basket. Uh, it was, and then from there, they're in a tough spot. You know, what do you do? Because you overhelped. We got guys on this team that can make shots. And then that's kind of when Troy took over after that. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you fellas.
Yeah, I got one here. 